dramatic named Lisa. Lisa. Um, I feel like a little shaky or whatever, and what I come to realize is like the euphoria, right? Um, like <clears throat> being in a Narcotics Anonymous event or convention, um, you know, just fills my spirit. Um, it overflows it, right? And when I got here, I didn't have a spirit. And before I get into anything, I like to thank the committee um, for asking me to come out inviting me because that's abnormal. Well, it was, right? For anybody to invite me anywhere um, and then feel so welcomed when I get here, right? And I felt welcomed since day one, no matter where I was, right? <clears throat> and I'm so grateful for God's grace, right? Because God has graced me with more than I deserve, right? And when I got here, right, like, and I can get like emotional because I can feel today. When I got here, I couldn't feel nothing. And, um, you know, and I know that like, uh, you know, there's a, um, where I was going with that, sorry. Uh, when I got here, I didn't, I didn't know if I believed in God. I did as a child, you know, and when people would talk about God, my skin would cringe. So coming from that, to telling you that, uh, you know, God's grace, right? And God can be whatever you want it to be. Good orderly direction is what they told me because my skin cringed, and today it don't. And, um, and welcome to the newcomer. You know, you are the most important, and we can only keep what we have by giving it away. And so many people have given me so much you know, that um, I'm indebted to this program forever. And when they told me forever, that like scared me, you know. So I'll tell you, it's a day at a time. And um, it just gets better. And look, <clears throat> um, so this came to my mind. I was talking to Jane or something. The thing was Jane. Um, this guy uh, I seen Saturday night. He was like, yeah, I seen one of your old pictures from DOC. You didn't look so hard. I said, oh, it ain't about that. It's about that, <laughs> right? And he goes, oh, heart. And I'm like, yeah, heart. And like today, my heart, right, isn't like it was. Because I used to be very cold hearted. Um, you know, I would do anything not to feel. And, um, you know, today my, my heart, you know, that's the best thing that's happened to me is my heart's changed, which changed my perception. Um, you know, I, I got a life beyond my wildest dreams. When I heard people talk about that, you know, I just figured they were full of shit. And um, because that's just what my perception was. And my perception has, has changed so much, you know. And so what had happened for me, I was on my third bit down a penitentiary. And I had about five years in. And um, I started going to meetings in there. And I was going for all the wrong reasons. And they say it doesn't matter how you get here as long as you get here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't, I, went, you know, I was using. I wasn't worried about being clean. I was going down there for, you know, into the rooms for all uh, um, self, right? Like, um, I had a, okay. Um, <clears throat> for self, uh, you know, whatever. I was going down there to meet somebody. And we were passing kites or whatever we were doing. And um, that's why I went. And I was disruptive. I didn't respect myself, so how could I respect you? And um, so anyway, what had happened is that girl left, and I kept continuing to come to the meetings. Actually, I think I might have went in segregation for a while. And, um, and I know I did. And I remember being in that five-by-cell, five-by-seven cell by myself, wanting to turn my skin inside out because I just couldn't stand myself any longer. And um, not that I was clean when I was going to the rooms, but there's just sometimes you hear some stuff, you know, and they talk about that seed planet, right? So what had happened was I remember kicking after I got off lock because no matter where I go, I could find anything I want. And I could be in a, in a five by seven cell behind double, you know, locked doors and still get what I need, you know? I mean, it, it's just... It's crazy how powerful the disease of addiction is. So anyway, you know, I remember rocking on my bottom bunk, trying to kick, 
and asking God, please to take, please take it. And it's weird, right? Because I didn't even, you know, uh, like want anything to do with God unless it was something for me, right? And um, so what had happened was I started going back to them to them meetings with you people, and um, there was something, right? There was something that kept like drawing me back. And in hindsight, what I know, it was like the spirit of these women. Like these women had something, right? And I just couldn't figure out at the time like what it was, but it was like drawing me. And um, what I found today, it was their spirit, right? And uh, I remember, so look, this is my story and this is how it went. Down there, you know, real quick, you can, NA was very, um, very in demand. Right. Other other fellowships weren't right because I didn't know alcohol is a drug. I didn't know any of that kind of, you know, stuff. I didn't know anything about narcotics anonymous. Right. Or uh, a 12 ship, 12 step fellowship. So what happened was I was going in all the different kind of fellowships, you know, because we would get on the list for three months. And then once you did your 90 days on that list, you had to get off and you had to go to the end of the list to get back on it to go to a narcotics anonymous meeting. Right. And um. So I was experiencing with all the other fellowships and there there wasn't a list and you could go because there wasn't a lot of people that wanted to go because people don't know, you know, that don't know alcohol is a drug, right? So what happened was I ended up getting a sponsor in another fellowship and um, I had about three months clean and I went to a behavior modification program out in Crownsville. Look, not that I wanted to go to this behavior modification program, right? Because for the love of me, I did not have a behavior problem. You know what I mean? Like anywhere I went, you were all the problem. I don't care where I was, it was not my problem. I had no, uh, you know, idea that I was the problem. Even though everywhere I went, there was a problem. Um, you know, my, my perception was so twisted. It was ridiculous. So anyway, um, this lady, right? So look, I remember this counselor, right? And like, thank God, right? Some stuff happened down there and it gave me, um, it hit, I hit a bottom in the penitentiary. Not that that, you would think that would be the bottom, right? <laughs> No, that wasn't the bottom for me. And then, um, but I did hit a bottom in there and I was like, I gotta get out of here. And that's the reason I got out of there, right? Because if I just get out of here, I'll be okay. And, um, and when I, after I got out of there, I remember this guy, uh, Mr. Reed, he was like, do you know a lady named Amy? And I'm like, "Mm mm-mm. He's like, you don't know anybody named Amy? And I was like, no. And he said, well, what's your sponsor's name? And I was like, Oh, Amy. (laughs) So, long story short, Amy came uh, to visit me, and she brought me stuff like Dove and Origins and and stuff that, like, I wasn't used to. You know, look, I was a bum, right? And um, I wasn't worried about, like, bathing and all that type of stuff. So she brought me some, like, you know, I was used to Lisa soap. Shit, I dyed my hair with Lisa soap and peroxide, right? I mean, that's the kind of shit I did, you know, like origins right or what, what, what's that right and I, I didn't worry about like taking care of myself or nothing like that and uh so she brought me this stuff and I can relate because the only man that has never hurt me in my life was my grandfather and we were really poor growing up right and he bought me like these little they were like from Avon but they were little wishbone earrings right and I treasured them and that's how you know I learned my love language here that that's how I identified with love was by think right? Because the only man that never hurt me bought me things. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot around here. Like, I love Narcotics Anonymous. So um, what had happened was I knew where I belonged. I knew I was an addict. See, and when I asked Amy to sponsor me, she was like, why? See, I don't work this, you know, I was like, because I want to work in you know, <laughs> Narcotics Anonymous steps. And she's like, I don't have any experience with that. I said, well, I tell you what, I'll work yours if you work mine. And she was like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll do that. You know, she never did that, right? <laughs> but after, you know, when people started coming in, I was able to start going out of the meetings. Um, I started, <clears throat> you know, um, I was going to all Narcotics Anonymous meetings except that one with Amy. And I felt obligated to Amy because she had done so much for me. She was the first woman that had, like, was doing stuff for me and wasn't, like, you know, it was just, it was very foreign to me. And um, I don't even know if I appreciated her as much as I appreciate her today, 
for what she did for me um, because she started like showing me some things about women. You know, because look, for me, you know, um, water seeks its own level and I saw it the same kind of women as me. And they may not have had the same type of behaviors, but maybe they had the same type of heart, right? Or maybe they had, you know, different defects, but we were at the same level. And um, anyway, so what happened was after, you know, I got out, I celebrated my year with Amy and then I switched to Narcotics Anonymous. But what happened was there was this one girl, Kathy B, and she was coming to pick me up. And I love Kathy. Like, we used to laugh, and she would co-sign my shit. She had been down at penitentiary, uh, like, I mean, like a revolving door, like me, and I just loved her. And, you know, they had this thing down there, right? It was called Women Behind Bars. I can get you a bam bam. So, <laughs> I got one, a couple. I put my sister's picture up on the internet, and um, <laughs> you know she's just pretty blonde, blue eyes, right? Little smoking body. So I was like, you know, I mean, I'm, I've been locked up for over five, you know, a long time, and you know, and hookups can get you. <laughs> anyway, right? So what it happened was, I said, Kathy, I think you should be my sponsor, right? And she was like, Yeah. You know, because again, she was in another fellowship and I had a year clean and I didn't understand. And she was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm still in another fellowship. And I'm like, yeah, but you, you were in NA and you worked at 12 Steps of NA. So, you know, what's the difference? So, and she co-signed my shit, right? And I didn't, at the time, I didn't know that. But what had happened was I had an awakening at one point. And then when I had two years clean, Real quick, there was this lady named Mary. Everywhere I went, there was this lady, Mary. And everybody thought Mary was so great. And, and, and I didn't see her being so great, right? Like, look, every time I seen her, she had these jeans on with holes in them, Harley Davidson t-shirts, right? Like boots, like, you know, work boots or Harley boots or whatever boots, right? And I'm like looking at her and I'm like, oh, right? why do these people think Mary is so great? And, um, you know, Mary is great, right? <laughs> Just tell you, right? Because Mary had a heart, and Mary gave back to Narcotics Anonymous. And you know, and every like I said, everywhere I went, I don't care where I went, she was there. And, and I moved in. Me and me and Dave, I think he's here. He was he was my roommate, and um, he was like, yeah, my, oh, I'm getting my hair cut. My best friend's coming over to get my hair. You should meet her. She's great. It's Mary, right? <laughs> Dave uh, fell in love moved out with his girlfriend. I moved in with this guy, Steve, rented a room, and he was like, oh, you probably know my cousin, Mary. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out of here, bro. You gotta be kidding me. So when I went to write a list, right, because I knew I had to change sponsors, I was on my sixth step, and I just, I wanted to change sponsors if, you know, I needed to be in all in NA, right? And, um, and Mary became my sponsor. And let me tell you what, that lady loved me um, when I was like the most unlovable person, right? They talk about sponsor being, sponsorship being two way. I was one way. I was one way for a very long time. I didn't know nothing like, you know, she's actually too the first woman that I ever felt compassion for. And look, when I first came around, if you didn't come from where I came from, from like with my childhood, cause that was, that's a whole nother meeting. It was just, it was, little girls shouldn't experience things that I had to experience all the way around. And, um, you know, her mom died when she was given birth when, to Mary. And so I knew, because I didn't know my dad, and I had never seen a picture of him until actually a year ago. And him and my mom were married for a few years, and my brother is like three and a half years older than me. And so when I couldn't understand why I never, you know what I mean, I always thought, you know, there was something missing or whatever. So I couldn't imagine how Mary must have felt. You know, so I knew that she experienced the same kind of pain I did. And it may not have been the same type of, uh, you know, problem, right, or event, but it was the feelings. And that's what I learned around here, like it's the feelings. It's not actually what had happened to create them feelings, it's the feelings itself. And um, I learned so much. Everything I know, I know because of Narcotics Anonymous. And I mean, that's even like how to talk, right? Because all I knew was my vocabulary was pinochle. <laughs> Commissary. Anyway, 
So, uh, you know, I worked, I, you know, I started the steps over and I worked all 12 steps with Mary and she taught me a lot of things. And, you know, she was very, very big in my life. And in the beginning of the time that Mary sponsored me, I hung out with a guy named Frank L. And Frank has a bunch of clean time and I thought he was the best. And, um, like, the guy Ricky, um, I date, he was like, you know, nobody can tell you anything if it ain't Frank or Mary. And I'm like, that's right. Because, look, I didn't know how to make a decision, right? I was afraid. And, look, when I was in that behavior modification program, it was the first time I ever admitted that I was afraid. Because, look, don't you know, like, look, if I told you one of my weaknesses, you would have something on me. And I couldn't have that. You know, like, look, I, I'm, I'm from, like, my back against the wall. You don't show emotion, you know. And um, I remember, you know, Alexander S. from Northeast Freedom Area at the time. He had a bunch of clean time, and, and he gave me my first shot of hope. He was down at penitentiary three times, did over five years. They sent him to this behavior modification program, and boom, you know, he had, like, almost 30 years at the time or 25, something like that. It was a lot of clean time. And he was a different gender, a different color, a different religion, a different era. He was a different everything. And um, it, you know, that opened my eyes to you can't judge the book by its cover, you know. And um, that that that's a big thing, you know. And sometimes I can still do that today, right? Because, you know, I try to live the best that I can with these spiritual principles that I was taught around here in Narcotics Anonymous. You know, I had um, I was reading something. Oh, look, let me. Let me say this, right? Because I was like, and I said it to Dennis, and I'm, I'm glad that I seen Dennis, right? Because I said, uh, he said, oh, I heard you're getting ready to share. And I was like, yeah, with the guru, right? And he goes, who, John? And I said, yeah, and he goes, he's just like we are. And I'm like, yeah, I know. See, because I was telling my, I was telling my boyfriend, that's John, uh, John's Ricky sponsor by name, but we know who his real sponsor is. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, anyway. Right? We have separate programs. <laughs> I love laughing. And I can laugh at myself today, right? But um, I said, man, he can like break this down and break that down. And I got to get me a sponsor like John. And da, da, da. Ricky's like, yeah. He said, why don't you just study the basic text? And I thought, wow. Because right? <laughs> a sponsor can't do nothing for me that I don't do for myself. A sponsor can't keep me clean. Like, it's not my responsibility to keep someone clean. And if they're clean, it's not because of me. I ain't the great I am. I'm powerless, right? It's your choice. I'll help you, though, with my experience. And if I don't have the experience, I'll share with you someone that does. Because I've been around long enough, and I come around long enough, and I show up in my recovery enough to listen, right? Because I learned how to listen. And I know some people. And, you know, I know people. A lot of people, right? And the, where I got knowing these people is from service. Hi, Shell. I love Shelly. Um, so I was reading, right? Um, I knew, like, so many people. And uh, look, and they liked me. <laughs> Not all of them. But anyway, right? And that's okay. And I'm cool with that. Like, when I thought when I got around here, like, I wanted everybody. You know what I mean? Like, don't you know who I am? Well, actually, see, too, when I had my back against the wall, I was like, uh, I had, like, when I was telling Carrie about it, it wasn't about this, it was about this. See, I had this, but I was afraid to show it, right? In Narcotics Anonymous, I had to have a sponsor that wasn't afraid of me to tell me about myself. <clears throat> it says, um, like, why do I need a sponsor? And it says... Well, it's pretty, pretty hard to spot self-deception by yourself. And self-deception self is like lying to myself. I use, you know, and I say, I was so delusional, right? And what is delusion? It's um, like, I, I, I can convince myself. Like, I convinced myself down at penitentiary that I was okay, right? Like, I had my stuff. And then they took my stuff, but I still had, like, stuff, right? <laughs> I was good. They said go to this place. I was like, I only got two and a half more years of mandatory. Why would I want to go there for them to tell me what to do? That's crazy. Right? Delusional. Characterized by holding indo in, indo or something like that. Beliefs or impressions that are contradicted by reality or rational argument. Tip 
typically symptoms of a mental disorder. <laughs> Ooh, thank God for Narcotics Anonymous. That's my medicine. <laughs> Look, you know, I have, um, I had just, I, you know, there, it, it came a time where I just, there were some things that happened, um, and I decided to switch sponsors, and I switched for a minute, um, to uh, a lady, and then, you know, it, it didn't, it wasn't what I needed it to be, so I switched to the current sponsor that I have now. Um, she's another one that's not afraid of me. I can't have people afraid of me. Look, when I came around here, and if you know me, I know it, you know, and if you know me since I've been around, which a lot of people have, and I know it's probably hard to believe, but I was, try, I tried to be intimidating, right? Because I didn't want anybody to, you know, you know, that intimacy and stuff like that. Let me share a story, and then I will uh, let John take it. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to say that, and then I'll say something else. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows John. I love him. This is an honor, right? Anyway, with John. Any, anytime. Anyway, so we went to this women's convention. Actually, Liddy was there, Vickery. There was a bunch of uh, people in um, Lydia's sponsorship family. It was me, Mary, Jen. It was a bunch of us, right? A couple girls from um, Baltimore. And uh, we went to this first women's convention in Georgia. It's called the Little Girl Growing Up. And um, man, I remember like being at the, uh, at the table and Debbie J was there. And um, I'm looking, right? Because I'm at this restaurant, right? With all this bougie stuff, right? Like it had like a couple plates and a couple sets of silverware. Like what the hell are you supposed to do with that, right? Like, I mean, and Debbie's like looking at me and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I mean, what am I supposed to use to eat? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a, three sporks, three, I mean, sporks, three. <laughs> three forks, three spoons. I'm like, I didn't have to make a decision on a spoon or a fork. I used a spork for so long, right? Like, what the hell am I supposed to be doing here, right? So she helped me. And, like, thank God I had the humility to say, I don't know what to use. That's, like, you know what I mean? That's, but I had to do that a lot. But I remember we, were, we went back to the room, and um, Beth was sponsoring this girl. I mean, Mary was sponsoring this girl, Beth, that was with us. And, um... We were up talking and whatever, and like it was really uncomfortable for me. Because, you know, look, when I went to that um, behavior modification program, they we were like, yeah, you need to hang out with the women. I'm like, just left a thousand. Yeah, I ain't hanging out with them. They don't even know how to play pinochle. You gotta be kidding me, right? And um, I think you're doing all that. Who said that? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I said, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. And Mary and Beth stayed up and talked. And Mary and Beth built, like, this really good um, closeness and friendship, right? And they're probably, like, almost best friends today. And it was because Beth invested in the friendship sponsorship with Mary. It was really hard for me to do that. I didn't trust women, you know, um, because of the kind of women, because of the kind of woman I was. You know, when I got here, you know, I mean, I came from, you know, bad experiences because I put myself there, you know, and I, I did what I, you know, what I, what I knew, and I did what I needed to do to get one more, you know, and um, that's how I lived for a very long time, and today, you know, because of these relationships that I've built with women along the way, and my first one, you know, um, and my main one is the sponsor, you know, look, and I sponsor women, right? Like, uh, you know, and when you do step work with uh, women, either you're doing it with them or you're doing it for them, you know, there's a, a, a bond that you get, you know. And I've had a couple girls, actually three, at five years clean, and two of them I sponsored the whole five, six years, um, you know, like decide they want to leave the program or use. And it's painful, you know, because um, I've learned how to build intimacy with women in here. Mm -hmm. And um, I share, because like, look, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think I was as, not as bad as you guys. I didn't think anybody was as bad as me. 
And I'm so grateful that the woman in my life shared with me some of the stuff that I never thought, you know, other people experienced. You know, and what that did, it's, it's created freedom for me. Uh, we were taking pictures, and uh, Sarah said, uh, well, and Jamie's like, yeah, she's not worried about, you know, worried about that picture, and <laughs> it's not how it used to be. Sarah's like, yeah, I remember a couple years ago, she was like, let me see, and, you know, I can't see, I can't see shit. But uh, they were like, um, uh, she was like, oh, well, look, and I was like, girl, like, I don't even care, right? And I mean, I do, but I don't, right? Like, I don't sit there, because if I start looking, because I, I, I'm not, you know, uh, I mean, I'm still, I'm an addict, and I still have defects that can come back, you know? However, you know, I try to practice principle and keep them in check with a 10th step, you know? Um, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> um, I don't even know where I was going with that, um, and I probably, I don't know, I think I'm done. All I know is that um, sponsorship is the heartbeat of NA, and um, if you don't have a sponsor, I suggest you get one and build that relationship, because like I know for women, it's, it's hard, and I don't know how it is for a guy, because I'm not one, um, even though I used to think that you know, I, I, I would fight them, shit, there ain't no difference, you know what I mean? <laughs> As whipped or not, right? That's how it was. And I'm um, like a big thing, you know, too, when I came here and people like, you know, I didn't like the feeling of the truth, you know, and now sometimes I will buck it, but I'm able to uh, process it and get it and that's like open mind mindedness you know and i'm teachable today i've learned so much here and i got so much more to learn and um i'm truly grateful thank you guys for inviting me out here and um, i'll definitely keep coming back